pound for pound sports entertainment hit the like button comment below hit the subscribe button man right now we got to continue to build ladies and gentlemen we got to get more active we got to do more do more do more we got to have more interviews more footage you know what I'm saying we got to do everything more more videos i'm about to just flood the whole market i don't even care no more anyway we're gonna get right to it man there was some boxing going on this weekend we had um you know what's it reptilian not i, I call him reptilian but uh giovanni you know he's, he took on alexis rocha last night and proceeded to beat the living breaks off of alexis rocha man golden boy taking another l man salute to oscar salute to golden boy promotions but god damn he, we stopped him in the sixth or the seventh and it was really kind of over in the first honestly dropped him two times alexis rocha boy you look terrible a lot of people are out here saying uh you were fooled regardless at the world weight division okay um this was for the with the, the wbo interim or whatever title for you know bud's belt it don't matter listen that could have easily been a tune-up for bud in any capacity if alexis rocha would have ended up getting a, a terrence crawford fight um i feel like the top i mean it's, it's not that i feel like but a lot of people feel like alexis rocha was just probably the probably would have been the weakest like interim champion or champion at 147 pounds if you know uh terence crawford and, and earl spence move up then all these people that have the interim belts this that and a third would be elevated to full champion but listen i don't know what he does now i don't even know if you try to run that back because i don't think you want to run that back because that was a epic behind you know butt whooping in front of the world oh my god oscar over here mad oscar had to get on uh social media after that because i mean oscar's been on a tear lately saying hey he we need all the promoters to work together and blah 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 he even got on social media last night on twitter saying hey this is why we need you know everybody to work together and i'm like yo you've been taking l's all year baby they really think about this right ryan garcia gets his gets, gets stopped by a tank i think that was in the seventh round he gets stopped you know after all that build up blah 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 uh i you know um what was it virgil ortiz ends up pulling out a fight with stanny onus due to health issues this that a third we don't even know if he obviously he's not coming back to 47 so i think at the lowest he'll go is 54 maybe 60. we don't know what his future holds last i heard he was in school you know salute to virgil ortiz and we you know praying that you're, you know your health and get everything together when it comes to your health um jaime Mungia, he hasn't fought in a while he, he's talking about possibly fighting uh john Ryder. that's an okay fight you know that's okay you know that's cool you know john Ryder coming off of a loss to canelo alvarez but man it's been a bad year and then oh you add in alexis rocha last night getting his behind beat the brakes off of like that was bad bro it's just been a bad year for golden boy but hey listen oscar you're you're a cool promoter but like i said i do agree with you to a to a point that these guys got to work together these promoters got to work together not even just for the for the best fights but for the to keep the the sport of boxing alive it seems like it's been a whole bunch of oh i'm gonna do this they're gonna do this and okay well i'm just focused on my budget and focus on you know what i got going on and i understand that's business but yo you can only focus on the fighters that you got and doing stuff in-house for a while especially if you got these guys on this side of the uh, fence and these guys on this side of the fence they're making a lot of noise and then you put them together that's gonna make for a super mega fight super mega fights equals casuals coming into the game and, and no you know being noticing everybody and wanting to pay attention to these fights and the public demanding it and that it, and that transfers over into big money that's ultimately what you're in it for especially if you say this isn't a sport this is a business i mean why would you not want to make the money i'm just saying you know but yeah man salute to oscar alexis rocha i don't know what you're gonna do sir i don't know who you're gonna fight sir i think you should take some time off sir okay um we also had another fight over on the zone over in the uk <sighs> jack catterall uh, uh i don't even know if it was in the uk but it looked like it was in the uk but jack catterall against uh jorge lonares <sighs> honestly on paper i didn't give a crap about this fight i'm not gonna lie to you i did not care about this fight was not really interested at all you know uh Caterall ends up winning the fight jorge linares um you know he retires he said he's done he's good 
I'm not mad at you, Lenars. You've had a good career, you know. It's time, you know what I'm saying? You still got all your faculties. He says he still wants to be involved in the sport some kind of way, maybe as a trainer or something like that. Nah, I'm with you. You know, you're respected, respected name, you know, good reputation. Hey, you can leave the game on your own terms. Leave it, brother. I ain't mad at you at all, bro. Like, you know, get, still get paid good, you know, start up a good team, good, you know, do good training camps, get some fighters. And then you still active in the sport, but you're just not taking the punches in the face anymore. So I salute you for a, a phenomenal uh, career, good fighter, respectable name. Like I said, salute to you, sir. And, and, and you know, salute to you and your family, man. Um, As far as Jack Catterall, he calls out Josh Taylor again. I don't care about that fight anymore, bruh. I don't care. Nobody cares. Catterall, first of all, you have this. Is this your first fight back since since the Josh Taylor fight? Which, I mean, a lot of people had him winning. I had Jack Catterall winning that fight. I'm not going to lie to you. And that was a heck of a fight. But it was just so many delays and this, that, that. I don't care about it. none of that. Listen, you, Josh Taylor is not a big name anymore. Well, I take that back. He's, he's still an okay name. But after that butt whipping T.O. gave Josh Taylor, my God. Josh Taylor, I, he was talking about moving up to 47. So Jack Catterall, no, you're not coming to 47. So what are we doing? We're going to do a catchweight fight? which would mean absolutely nothing. No titles are on the line, no nothing. At least the last time you fought Josh Taylor, it was for Undisputed. At least it was worth something. I do agree, man. I, I, I do feel like you beat uh, uh, Josh Taylor the first fight, but I mean, ah, man, a rematch, will it mean anything? Like, that's my thing. Like, do we care that, what is on the line? Is it a future title shot? What are we doing? Is it a title eliminated? Like, well, who cares? Who, honestly, who cares? I, I really don't see, there's not going to be any buzz on that, really. I don't really care. But Jack Ketterall, stay busy. Get back in the ring immediately. Josh Taylor, get back in the ring. But if you're going to go to 47, it's time to go now. Because that way you can get yourself in position for a title shot. You get one in, you know, get used to 47. Then the next one will be a title eliminator. And then you back in there, baby. Especially if these uh, belts are, are about to get dispersed, if uh, Terence Crawford or Errol Spence, you know, uh, uh, you know, go go up to 54. So we'll see. It all, it's all dependent on uh, Terence Crawford. So salute to Jack Catterall. Salute to Jorge Linares for a great career. Salute to Josh Taylor. And I don't know what's next for him. Um. Oh man, we got Tyson Fury, Francis Ngannou coming up. Oh God. I don't care. I, 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 don't, I don't care about this exhibition or I don't even know if this is an official fight. Like, what, what is it? Is the WBC, is, is Tyson Fury's WBC heavyweight championship even on the line? I don't think so. So even if he goes in there and gets knocked out by Francis Ngannou, this is the crazy part about it, right? So if he gets knocked out by Francis Ngannou, it's going to be Francis Ngannou is going to be still called the baddest man in the world and all oh, that belt needs to be around my waist. I'm the real champion. But then if you're Tyson Fury, you have... You got the Uzik fight lined up and already signed, sealed, and delivered. They talking about trying to do that in December. So if I'm Tyson Fury, that's a lot of pressure, bro, because you're not going in there with a, a, a little guy. This is Francis Singanu. He's awkward as well. He's got power as well. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't care if you got Mike Tyson in your corner. I don't care if you have a legitimate uh, boxing trainer in your corner, bro. The stuff that I have seen, you're not. No, bro. It's going to be bad for you. You're too slow. You know, we, we see your punches coming. You load up on everything. Tyson Fury going to pepper you. Tyson Fury going to catch you with something. I feel like Tyson, I feel like we're going to see the, the old Tyson Fury. I feel like we're going to see the old Tyson Fury. He steps on the outside, peppers you, pisses you off, talks to you a little bit, mixes it up. And then when you get lax thinking it's a jab, here goes the right hand. He's sitting down on the punch here and there. You might see the most complete version of Tyson Fury in this fight you have ever seen. Because I just feel like it's too much muscle on Francis Ngannou. He's going to tire out. He loads up. This MMA and boxing, that type of, the, the cardio is different. The things that you got to look out for in MMA compared to boxing is way different. You have to look a certain, even Clarissa Shields said it. It's like when you look in boxing, you look like at the head. You see the punches coming right here. But when you're looking in MMA, you got to look kind of like in the chest area because you still got to watch out for the legs knees kicks you know uh, spinning back fist stuff like that you got to be careful for takedowns you got to watch all that 
I just think, I don't know, man, Francis, you haven't been boxing enough, yo. And like I said, from what I've seen, just from seeing you hitting the pads, hitting the bag, even with Mike Tyson, man, I don't see it, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. If you do it, okay, you might shock the world, but then this here goes the problem. You beat Tyson Fury, you're still not going to get anything. I mean, you're going to get your money. I ain't mad at you. Allegedly, you make $10 million. So get your money, good brother. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at that at all. But at the same time, if you beat Tyson Fury, don't you want that championship belt around your waist? Because either way, y'all going to have to run it back regardless. You feel me? Really think about that. You beat Tyson Fury. I, I want the belt. I want this to be official. <laughs> like, I want my name in, in the history books as the heavyweight champion of the world. Not just, oh, you beat him in the exhibition. Like, come on, bro. Shit. You know, but I mean, we'll see what happens with that. I'm not looking forward to the fight. Am I going to watch it? Yes, I'm going to watch it. Uh, I'm going to watch it. You know I am, but I'm not happy with it. I just don't care. I feel like this could have been Uzik. Honestly, all the fake negotiation pulling out. He wants this. He wants that. I want this. And he doesn't deserve that and all that other crap. We could have just been had undisputed. And then don't even let me get started on Anthony Joshua and, and, and Deontay Wilder. I don't even, just at this point, stop interviewing Eddie Hearn about this. Because he's saying one thing, one team saying one thing, another team saying another thing. One team is saying th this, uh, Wilder don't want the fight. Other team saying Anthony Joshua don't want the fight. Anthony Joshua's over here uh, locking himself in a, in a closet or something in the room for four days out the week or something. And I'm not mad at that because, I mean, listen, some, sometimes you got to just break off you know, have conversations with yourself, come up with a game plan, concentrate, get your mental together, and then regroup and then go out there and execute, I mean, execute in the world. So I understand that. I've been there. But I can we just, haven't, haven't the boxing world been asking for Wilder and AJ for years, bro? This is a classic, a classic sense of over-marination. This is exact. This is the perfect example of over marination. When we wanted it, y'all were undefeated. When we wanted it, y'all had belts. Now we we might even we might get this fight with no belts on the line. What value does that hold? What value? We just seen Wilder get stopped twice. We just seen AJ get stopped and beat three times. What are we talking about, bro? Is it a big fight? Yes. Honestly. I think AJ and Wilder will will do bigger numbers than Francis Ngannou and Tyson Fury. I feel like AJ and Wilder will do bigger numbers than Tyson Fury and Uzi for Undisputed. I guarantee you, I think it would generate more money than them as well. But allegedly, the Saudi deal was the problem. I don't know if whoever pulled out or the timing or whatever. I don't know. But God, damn, how long y'all been negotiating? That's my thing. Damn, get it together. Get it together, man. Honestly. But anyway, y'all hit that like button. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it, man. We got a lot of things going on in the box. I just want to give y'all a little mini recap of stuff going on, man. Um, As far as Showtime going to Amazon, I have no problem with it. As far as Showtime, um, I mean, not Showtime. As far as PBC going to Amazon, I have no problem with it. As far as PBC doing business with his own, I have no problem with it. This is for the betterment of boxing. Give them a budget. Give them some dates. Y'all mix it up with uh, uh, Eddie Hearn and them. Let's start. Let's get these big fights going, man. That's big fights, big money for everybody. I don't care. This y'all got to come together for the betterment of the sport of boxing. Even if you don't even look at it as a sport, like I said, for the business of boxing, y'all have to work together. And what better way to work together than have uh, was three out of the four major promoters under one roof at his own? The zone has the budget. Come on, I don't care no more, bro. People don't care no more. I mean, I never cared, but people don't care no more. And you got the weird boxing fans out here trying to gangbang promotions and stuff. Bro, just gangbang boxing. And you know what I mean when I say that? Just why well, be a, a fan of the sport of boxing. Enjoy the fights. You know what I'm saying? Support your favorite fighter. Support the big fights. Support all the fights. That's all it is. Anyway, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button, man. Salute to everybody involved. It's your host, F. Merritt, Pound for Pound Sports Entertainment. I'm out.